Good afternoon. Today we are going to continue our lesson in Unit 3 about parallel lines. Today we're going to do a little bit of algebra. We're going to use the relationships we discovered last class to help us write some equations to solve some problems. The first thing I want to do is just quickly review what we learned last class. When I have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then I have some congruent angle pairs that are created. My corresponding angles, my alternate interior and alternate exterior angles, will always be congruent angles. I also discovered that there are some supplementary angle pairs, specifically my same side interior angles and my same side exterior angles will be supplementary. And then lastly, there are two other angle pairs that regardless of parallelism are congruent or supplementary, depending. And those are my vertical angles, which are always congruent, and my linear pairs, which are always supplementary. So that's a quick review of what we did last class. Let's see how we can use that to solve some problems. In example one, we're asked to take this figure and identify the type of angle pair and whether they are congruent or supplementary. I went ahead and did the first one. I identified that one and three are both on the top left of their angle clusters and are therefore corresponding angles. And I know that corresponding angles are congruent. I urge you to pause the video and try the remaining parts of this example yourself and then check your answers to see how you did. All right. Compare your answers to what I have here. Hopefully I got them right, but there are no guarantees if you know me. The one that we did together is the one that my students have the hardest time with. My supplementary angles, notice, will be in different colors. My vertical angles are always congruent regardless of whether my lines are parallel. I can tell in this figure that my lines are parallel because I can see those little parallel arrows that help me visually indicate that from this diagram. The next example we're going to do, or the next set of examples, all assume, or we are given, that the lines L and M are parallel. And we're going to identify the angle pairs and the value of x for lots of these different examples. So the first thing I notice is that the answers are kind of given away here. I marked up my picture so I could identify which angles were which, and I noticed that the two angles I, were, I was given are in the same relative position. They are right of this angle cluster and top right of this angle cluster. Therefore, they are congruent. I set them equal to each other. I solved my simple algebraic equation, and my angle pair would be corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. So that was an easy one. Let's try another. All right, in example three, I'm going to ask you to work this perhaps with me rather than just giving you the answers right away. First thing I did was mark up my picture and I'm looking at the two angles that I was given information of. First thing I noticed is they were both inside my parallel lines and they are both on the same side of the transversal. And any time I am pronouncing an angle pair and I run into lots of S's, I know that they are supplementary. These, in this case, are same side interior angles and therefore supplementary. So the first thing I do is I write, a geometric, I write an algebraic equation to represent that geometric relationship. That means that 5x minus 32 plus x plus 8 will equal 180. That is the definition of supplementary. From there, I can combine my like terms. Notice I'm doing a little bit of an algebraic proof here. Once I've combined like terms, I can add 24 to both sides using the addition property. And then lastly, I can divide both sides by six using the division property to conclude that X is equal to 34. And then from that, the other thing I was asked to do was to identify the angle pair relationship, which we did immediately. Without this angle pair relationship, I could not have written this algebraic equation. My angle pairs are same side interior and therefore supplementary. The 
next one's a little bit more interesting. In this picture, your picture, you have a line that goes down, across, and down. My suggestion when you are looking at pictures like this is to extend the lines so you can see the full parallel lines cut by a transversal and all of the angle pair relationships that are created. The first thing I noticed is that the angle I was given, 3x minus 40, is inside my parallel lines and the angle x is outside my parallel lines. There is not an, algebra, an uh, angle pair relationship that will contend, contend with this because they are not on the same side of the transversal, therefore they're not corresponding. So I am going to use another angle that I do have a relationship with. I created angle, it created, and I labeled this angle Y. And the reason I did that is because now I can do, I can think about the fact that angle 3x minus 40 and angle Y are both same side interior angles and therefore supplementary. That's useful because I know that X and Y, regardless of what's over here, have a relationship because they're vertical angles. So I know X and Y are congruent. And then if I use a little bit of, here's my, my original geometry, my 3X minus 4 plus the Y angle are supplementary. We talked about that. And then we also said that X and Y are congruent because of the vertical angle, because they are vertical angles. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the substitution property and instead of writing a y here, I'm going to substitute in an x. And notice when I do that, I only have one variable. I do not need a system of equations. But I can solve this relatively simple, straightforward algebraic equation. I'm going to first combine my like terms. I'm going to use the addition property to add 40 to both sides. Lastly, I'm going to use the division property to divide by 4. And I come to the conclusion that x is equal to 55 degrees. If x is 55 degrees, my y value is also 55 degrees. And if I wanted to, I could substitute in and find um, and verify that this, these two angles will add up to 180 degrees. So here is an example where we didn't have a specific angle relationship between the two angles I was given information about. But because I have lots of angle pairs here with congruency and supplementary characteristics, I can still solve the problem, even though it's not as straightforward. All right, let's try another little bit more um, complicated example. In this example, I'm asked to find the values of x, y, and z, and I'm given a very busy diagram. As I did in the last example, I extended my lines so that I can see all of the different parallel lines cut by transversals. As a side note, there are six sets of parallel lines cut by a single transversal in this image. I challenge you to see if you can find them all. We're going to need several of those to solve these problems. The first angle pair that I recognize and, um, I, and, and I'm going to work with is I notice that angle 2y and angle 18 are both, I'm going to draw it over here, there's, there's my parallel lines cut by the transversal, there's my 18 degree angle, and here's my 2y angle. And so since they are both inside the parallel lines, and they're both on opposite sides of the transversal, I know that, um, and I, let me see, so 2y, and my 18 degree angle are alternate interior angles, and therefore they are congruent. So I can write an algebraic equation to represent that. They're equal, I solve for y, and I'm left with y equals nine. If y equals nine, and because these are congruent angles, I know that this is an 18 degree angle, and I can use that information now. The next angle pair that I am going to work with are, um, let's, I'm going to work with 3x plus 18 as one angle. I'm going to think of this all as one angle, and I am going to use it and its relationship to that 63 degree angle. 
And for this, I'm going to use the top and the bottom and the left hand side. And I'm going to look at these two angle pairs. Because they are on the same side of this line, and because they're both inside the top and bottom parallel lines, I can conclude that 3x plus the 18, this top angle, plus the 63 degree angle together are supplementary and add up to 180. When I do this, 3x plus 81 equals 180. I can use the subtraction property to say that 3x is equal to 99. And then by my division property, x is equal to 33. That's marvelous. So if x is equal to 33, actually, I'm not going to use that for the other one. There is one more angle I need to find. I need to find the measure of angle z, which is over here. There are a lot of different ways I can do that. I can say that 11z plus 2y plus 63 are supplementary, add up to 180. In that case, I would be looking at the left and the right and the bottom. And those angle pairs are same side interior and therefore supplementary. The other thing I could do is I could say that 11z and 3x are top, bottom, transversal. Here's one of them and here's the other one. I did that backwards. Um, scratch that, that's a different one. This is over here and this one's over here. So they are same side interior angles and therefore congruent. So I could say 3x is equal to 11z. Well, 3 times 33, if I substitute my x value equals 11z, this comes out to 99. And by my division property, I can conclude ah, that z is equal to nine. If you check the online notes, I calculated the value of z using supplementary angle pairs. So I did it a slightly different way. You can just look at that if you would like so that you can see and compare because there are more than one, um, one there's, there is more than one way to solve many of these problems. Example six, is a fairly straightforward problem where you are given information about angle one and angle five and asked to find the value of x and then use that to find the value of angle four. Sorry, x isn't an angle. I invite you to please pause the video, try, try solving this problem, and then check back to see how you did. All right, here's how I solved it. I first recognized that angle one and angle five were alternate exterior angles. That should say exterior. And because they're alternate exterior, they are congruent. Because they're congruent, their measures are equal. Therefore, I was able to write the algebraic equation, 7x minus 3 equals 8x minus 19, and I can solve for x. Once I know what x is, I'm able to Recognize that angle four and angle five are supplementary angles. They're actually a linear pair. So I don't even need the parallel lines to identify these two angles as being a linear pair, therefore supplementary. And because they're supplementary, their measures will add up to 180. I substituted in what I know about angle five. It can be represented by eight X minus 19. And since I know the value of X, I can conclude that that angle measure is 109. Once I know that this is 109 plus angle four equals 180, I subtract 109 using subtraction property from both sides, and I land with measure of angle four being 71 degrees. Key to put your degree mark there. When I'm naming angle measures, I use degrees. When I'm labeling variables, I do not need degrees. Just a quick overview of what we have talked about previously there. As with example six, in example seven, I'm gonna ask that you pause the video and try finding the value of x and the measure of angle three on your own, and then check back to see how we did. 
All right, folks. You'll notice that once again, I marked up my picture and I labeled it with the angle information that I was given. The first thing I noticed is that angle four and angle six are both inside the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal, therefore they are supplementary. Because they're supplementary, I know that they will add up to 180. And if I substitute in the information I was given about the particular angles, I come up with an algebraic equation to represent that geometric relationship. I can combine like terms, use subtraction property and the division property to find that x is equal to eight, six. <laughs> Once I know the value of x, I can actually find the measure, the numeric measure of both of those angles. And then there are lots of ways I could find the measure of angle three. I could say three and six are alternate interior angles. I could say three and four are a linear pair, and therefore supplementary. So you can come at this problem a couple of different ways. I chose the alternate interior path. Because they're alternate interior angles, I know they are congruent. And because they're congruent, I know their measures equal each other. The measure of angle six is nine x plus three. I substitute in the value of x, and I find that the measure of angle three is 57 degrees. Hopefully that's what you got as well. All right, folks, only two more examples to do. These are a little bit more complicated, so I thought we would do these together. Notice in this figure, there is a lot going on. I have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal here, creating all sorts of angle pairs between one, two, five, and six. Those same two parallel lines are cut by a transversal over here, creating angle pair relationships between three, four, six, and seven. Here, I have three angles that together form a straight line, so I know five, six, and seven are supplementary. Ah, my page is slippery. And I can say the same thing about one and two, they are a linear pair, therefore supplementary. Three and four are a linear pair, and therefore supplementary. So you see, there is a lot of going on here, and we just need to figure out what angles are useful in solving for x and for y. So the first two that I'm going to look at are, to me, fairly, um, fairly straightforward and fairly easy to see. I'm going to hide this other transversal because sometimes he visually gets in my way. If you wanted to, you could extend your lines so that you can see that these are two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And I'm going to identify angle three and angle seven. Here's my angle three, and here's my angle seven. I initially or immediately noticed that they are both inside my parallel lines, and they are both on opposite sides of my transversal. So I can say angle three and angle seven are alternate interior. That means that angle three is congruent to angle seven. And because of the definition of congruency, I know that their measures will be equal. Once I know their measures are equal, then I can do some substitution, 8x plus 3. And I can substitute for angle 7, its algebraic equivalent. And now I have an algebraic expression that rep represents this geometric relationship. From here, I do my algebra. I subtract 8x from both sides. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 3, sorry, divide by 5. Divide by 3, I was right. And I conclude that x equals 5. So that's how I can use the alternate interior relationship to help me figure out the measure or the, the value of angle x or variable x. Good grief, I can't talk. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to solve for y. I notice y is used in angle four. The easiest thing for me to do is to completely ignore the parallel lines and just notice that angle three and angle four are a linear pair. So I'm gonna mark both of these in blue. You can't really even hardly see, but I am gonna say that angle three and angle four are a linear pair. 
And because angle three and four are linear pair, I know that three and four oops, I messed my, are supplementary by the definition of linear pair. Mentory. Ooh, look at me go. By the definition of supplementary, I know that the measure of angle three, when added to the measure of angle four, will equal 180 degrees. And now I can do the substitution that I had that I did earlier, similar to what I did earlier. I can substitute eight times five plus three in for the measure of angle three. And I can say that angle four is equal to two y minus three, and that will equal 180 degrees. I've actually done two different substitution steps all at once here. I substituted the geometric or the algebraic expression 8x plus 3 and at the same time substituted the value of x. So if I'm doing a technical proof, I kind of cheated here by doing two steps at once. This would need to be two steps, but for our purposes, we should be good to go. I am going to simplify this lovely thing and I get 40 plus 20y, my threes cancel, equal 180. I use the subtraction property to get 140 for two, when 20 y's, I divide by 20 using division property, and I'm left with y equals seven. So even though this figure looked a little intimidating, the two problems that we had to solve were fairly straightforward. That can't be said of example nine. Example nine is as complicated as I can make it. I'm given tons of angle information and I'm asked to find X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna start with what I consider low hanging fruit. And that is to notice that angle three and angle six are alternate interior angles. And if you need to, over here, draw your picture. This would be my angle three, this is my angle six. I didn't slant my line quite as much as this one is, but, um, but you can see it's still there. Because they are alternate interior angles, therefore congruent, therefore their measures are equal, I can say that 5x minus 16 is equal to 3x. If I subtract 5x from both sides and then divide by negative two, I land with x being equal to eight. I love same side or alternate interior and alternate exterior angles or corresponding angles because that angle congruency is algebraically just easier to solve. The next thing I am going to look at is I'm gonna to try to solve for the variable y. To do that, I am going to ignore angles one, six, and five. And I'm just gonna look at these, the top and bottom, cut by a transversal, and I'm gonna notice that two and three, together with angle four, would make same side interior angles. If I draw that over here, so you can see it's that same transversal. Three and two are there, four is here, and so that's where my same side interior relationship comes from. So angle two plus three, together with angle four should add up to 180 degrees. I'm gonna do some substitution here. I end up with six y plus five. That's the measure of angle two plus five x minus 16, the measure of angle three plus 94, no, sorry, 97, the measure of angle four equals 180 degrees. I know what the value of x is, so I could actually rewrite this as five times eight minus 16 plus 97. I'm gonna combine all my like terms and I end up with six y plus 126 equals 180. I use my subtraction prob property and then my division property and I conclude that y is equal to nine. That was a lot, wasn't it? Finding the measure of angle Z, finding the value of variable Z, 
gosh, I can't talk, uh, is a little bit more straightforward. I'm going to look at angle two and angle five. Actually, I'm going to use green. Sure, let's use green because that might be a little easier to see. Angle two and angle five live on that same transversal. Angle two is here, angle five is here. They are same side in, or sorry, they are alternate interior angles. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. Here's my transversal. This one's on the left, this one's on the right. They are both inside the parallel lines. So angle two and angle five are also alternate interior angles. Therefore, they are congruent. By definition of congruency, I can say that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle five. The measure of angle two is six y plus five. The measure of angle five is 12 z minus one. I substitute the value of y into this half of my equation. I simplify, I end up with 59 equals 12z minus 1, 60 equals 12z, so z is equal to 5. That is a complicated problem. We did a lot of converting from geometric relationships to algebraic expressions and equations that allowed us to solve for some variables. If it helps, draw your pictures independently for each situation so that you're not worried about so many different angle pairs in the same drawing. I hope that you found this to be interesting, somewhat challenging, and feel free to contact me with any questions you have. Until next time, have a swell day.